Hello, Milford community, and welcome back to MPS Talks. I am very excited about today's topic because I feel I'm going to learn just as much as our viewers. My name is Dr. Matthew Joseph, the Director of Digital Learning and Innovation, and our focus today is to build off our last topic of active learning and dig into how our English learners are being active every day in their class. I've learned a lot in my two years here in Milford from our great EL teachers and our director, Jen Norjanian. A few things I've learned is that English language learners are, com are composed and are one of the fastest growing student populations in the country. We have over 750 EL students in Milford this year and it's growing. Classrooms across the United States are becoming increasingly diverse with increasing numbers of students whose primary home language are not English. I actually read a report to get ready for today, and in 2008-2009, estimated 10% of school-age students are identified as limited English proficient. Um, terms we use here, you might hear are English language learners or simply ELs for English learners here in our Milford classrooms. I've also learned that English learners benefit from increased exposure to print and language, um, a print uh, enriched in language will include like books and reference materials, labels and posters, student work on, on boards. Um, I know for a principal of 11 years, I know that academic language is a language that students need to succeed in school. And that's different than social language, which many students acquire first. And often students are available to communicate um, effectively with teachers and peers in social settings, but they struggle when it comes to textbooks, tests, assessment, or even class presentations. So my goal today is to talk about how we are increasing our EL student academic language, but I know that I couldn't do that uh, myself. So today I would like to welcome in one of our fabulous uh, EL teachers, Christina Cody, to MPS Talks to share her insights into working and enhancing learning opportunities for our EL students. So, Ms. Cody, welcome to MPS Talks. Thank you very much. Um, we'd love to hear kind of where you are, where you're a teacher, describe your class. L let us know a little bit about you before we dig into all the great things happening in your classroom. Sure. So, I teach second grade over at Memorial. Mm -hmm. I have a self-contained EL classroom, which means 100% of my student population speaks a second language at home. Okay. And how many students? I have 23 students. Okay. And how many years have you been um, at Memorial? Um, this is my second year at Memorial, okay. my fourth year in the district, and my sixth year teaching. Oh, wow. Okay. So your class, you just said, is primarily made up of English language learners. What is it all one language? No, I have about four different languages that my students speak, Okay. Um, which ranges from oh. all over the world. Okay. What are some of them? Um, we have Spanish, Arabic, Portuguese, um, Chinese as well. Yep. Wow. So uh, that's quite a challenge. It is. And uh, it's a testament to you and your planning. I know we talk a lot about planning. How do you plan for lessons with that wide range of, of learners and needs? When I'm planning a lesson, I'm thinking not only about the student's language acquisition, but also their learning styles. Mm -hmm. So they're students first, and they need you know, multi-sensory, hands-on teaching, especially mm -hmm. at such a young age. OK. What does that look like? To explain to, to me. Um, what that looks like, multi-sensory, hands-on learning. What, sure. If I came into your classroom, what would I see? So um, during the day, we're going to do a lot of movement. Uh, like you said about the academic language, yep. it's, it can be tricky for students. So we've incorporated a lot of songs into our lessons and a lot of chants. And if you come okay. into our classroom, you might see us using our hands um, to talk about math chants or singing songs about vocabulary that we've learned. Okay. Um, we like to use pictures and photographs, so students like the drawing pictures or looking them up on the computer. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of new vocabulary that comes in in second grade, and especially uh, with a new wide range of topics that these students are learning. So we want to present the information with them as information to them in as many ways as possible. And how do they feel? I know this. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about risk taking, but how does that work with students with multiple language working together and collaborating? Do you find, or what strategies do you use to? encourage students working together mm -hmm. um, when they maybe have a difficult time communicating with each other? So in some instances, I really like to provide my newcomers, my students who have uh, been here the shortest, who maybe have the least amount of language, to use their native language and describe a cognate or a word they know from back home. Okay. Um, and it works because my students who have more English can translate and talk to them and help them build an understanding. 
um, if we are finding that there's a barrier between two, we can, we can talk to each other, they can draw pictures, we can use examples, we can act it out as well. Okay, so there must be a lot of culture building, not mm -hmm. just um, ethnic culture, but classroom culture with the different learning styles, different backgrounds. What are some things that you do to encourage that team building, risk taking, building culture in your classroom? I try to let all my students know that although we're all learners, we're all leaders as well. Okay. And even though um, I'm up there and I'm teaching them, they still have plenty they can teach us too. And I try, them, try to let them take ownership of that okay. and allow them to teach each other during the day. Okay. And do you find that they are more willing to take that risk or less? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. I think, and I think at this age group, uh, they, they have less fear of being mm -hmm. wrong. And so they're excited and eager to talk to each other and work with each other and learn from each other. Um, we've also been doing a lot of growth mindset recently. And um, we know we're not allowed to say, I, I can't do something. Mm -hmm. um, we try to throw on yet at the end of it. So we understand that although we we're struggling with this topic, we just can't do it yet. And somewhere down the road, we'll be able to do it. OK. And do you find, because I've seen you do a lot of seat work, but also um, circle work. Mm -hmm. um, do you find that students are able to adapt to some of the teaching styles that we use or that you use um, in those circle groups? Or what are some of the group activities you do mm -hmm. with students to encourage student voice? And Because I know talking is increasingly important. How do you encourage that in some of your learners? So I try to build groups. So when we're, when we're in groups, I try to let students build their own groups or I group it by random. So I'm not grouping students by their skill or their ability. I'm sort of letting all students work with each other regardless of where they are in the curriculum. And by doing so, I think that every student has something they can add and offer. Mm -hmm. um, and so our students who are very successful might be able to support those that need a little more work. But those students that are not completely confident in the language yet still have plenty to share too. And I think that when they see that they have a voice and they're much more confident in a small group, they can share what they know. Thank you. So, and I know you've been incorporating a lot of the digital tools into your curriculum, like Flipgrid mm -hmm. and Seesaw. Mm -hmm. um, would love to hear you explain some of the projects that your students or work that they're doing to interact with both the technology that Milford is providing in their own kind of discovery learning and how that looks and plays out with some of their, you know, home languages. Absolutely. So one thing I've tried this year is allowing students to have a choice and a voice. And okay. so we have a variety of units that go throughout the year and they circle around a central topic. Uh, for example, we had one topic about animals and our guiding question was, what do we need to survive? And we all kept on focusing back to that question. Mm -hmm. And at the, end of the, at the end of the unit, I gave students a variety of topics or projects. So they could do a life cycle map. They could type up a report. They could draw a picture of an animal uh, mm -hmm. They could draw a habitat and show what people need based, they could draw a habitat of a human, compare it to a habitat of an animal. Uh, they had an option, and I didn't give more direction than that. And what I allowed them to do was take that and go with it. So it provided students a chance to explore what they knew and show me what they learned without being confined to this is what I want you to know, you need to write it to me in three paragraphs, it needs to mm -hmm. be five sentences, because when they're learning a second language, they might be really comfortable talking or drawing a picture and talking about it than sitting down and writing me a report, whereas some kids can put a pencil to a paper and just go. Okay. So what I like about using the technology is that with a Buncee or a Flipgrid or a Seesaw, they can each have their own personal tool, which is the Chromebook, and they can use it in whichever way best suits their needs. Okay, and do they do, do the students do a lot of collaboration or there's a lot of solo projects? Oh no, so we do, depending on the project, um, there is some collaboration. Okay. I have some photos and it shows students working together on a project. And I love, you know, sometimes you, I joke that you're gonna need a, you know, you're gonna need a photographer or someone to get the best angle, right? Yeah. So you're gonna need someone to help you out. But also they can work together and share that technology too. And uh, the collaborating is huge because when some know more and some don't, they can learn from each other. So what would be um, a, a message or, or uh, something a, a classroom teacher without English language learners would be surprised to know 
and maybe something that they could start to incorporate into their class because as we said in the opening, it's an increasing student population and all of our teachers are going to be English language teachers mm -hmm. to ensure that all learners are, are getting an education. What would be something for a teacher who has never taught in a classroom with an EL student? I think that um, when teachers don't have any EL learners there, they're concerned they're not going to know what to do. Mm -hmm. uh, but I would like other teachers to know that the best practices and the best strategies that you're using with your native speakers work just as well with your ELs. You know, you still mm -hmm. need to be cognizant of the vocabulary and the language and building that up a little bit more, but all students are going to benefit from that regardless of learning, whether they're learning a second language or not. Excellent. And so your students, they don't eat in the classroom. They are matriculating throughout the school and go to different areas. What are some strategies you build into them to have that I don't want to say courage that they can't do it, but it could be a whole different setting going from a classroom where they're comfortable to a lunchroom or to a mm -hmm. special in a different environment. What are some things that you incorporate into our EL students to give them that uh, really excitement to go and expand some of the things that they're doing? Uh, you know, when we look at the playground and I, I think of the students I look out there, the kids just go out and play, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. They don't look at someone and say, mm, you know, they're still learning English right now and they're not super proficient so I'm not going to play with them but they really all do a great job of allowing everyone to play with them. Now that doesn't mean that some of my students who are who are new to the country don't have the skills to sort of go up and ask to play. So mm -hmm. we teach about you know what are some things you can do if you see someone playing soccer can you you can go up and say you know may I join you or say oh can I show you something. We, we try to give them the tools, the sentence frames, um, language that helps them know that they have words and they can use it and they're powerful and they can invite other people to play and join in with them. And you've seen that success happen in the playground and your kids feel empowered to do that. Absolutely. And it goes both ways. I mean, if if there's a disagreement, you know, they need to have the words to speak up for themselves and talk mm -hmm. about how they're feeling too. So I've seen it be very successful. So another piece I just want to ask about, we talk a lot about homeschool communication. Mm -hmm. What are some ways that you try to bring um, other families in, especially like you said, you had at least four different language at home. Mm -hmm. um, how do you bring all those families together for even just a discussion or a class day or something to yep. really celebrate what you're doing? So um, I, I try, I've tried using paper-based communication mm -hmm. and that can be a challenge. I've recently used uh, technology such as Twitter or Class Dojo. Mm -hmm. And what I love about those programs, especially Class Dojo, is that a parent can set their native language right in their app, so they download on their phone, almost like a messaging service. Okay. And so once they set the language they prefer, everything I send to them is automatically translated in that language. So it helps close that barrier. Um, so I can still type in English, which is the only language I speak, and they can read it on their phone in Spanish. Um, by giving them all the information and the updates on what we're doing or what their student is doing independently and individually mm -hmm. helps sort of close that gap and bridge, like you said, that homeschool connection. And I can invite students, families into the building. Um, and I think when a student sees a parent come in, uh, it, it changes the way a student feels about school. Um, you know, it, it's, it's nice to show the teacher and parent almost like as, a, as a unified front, you know, mm -hmm. that we both support what you're doing. And although some parents work uh, and I can share pictures of what the child is doing, the child can still go home and the parent can still have a conversation about that. So even if they're not able to be there that day, mm -hmm. to be able to know what they're doing and talk about it and, and say, I see what you're doing, keep up the great work, it has a huge impact on the student's day and behavior and academics. Oh, that's, that's excellent. So, so you're a seasoned sixth year teacher now. What, would, what advice would you give first year Ms. Cody to oh. as new teachers are coming into the profession to mm -hmm. working with English language learners, what would be some advice you would give to first year um, teachers? Uh, breathe, <laughs> breathe. To remember to find time, even if you just schedule it into your day, <laughs> find a minute and just take a breath because it's going to be okay. Um, you might have planned out seven super 45 minute lessons on paper and one of them might work and the other six might bomb and that's okay too. Um, seek out, seek out the people who can help. There are people in your building that are mentors and don't even know it yet. Um, 
there are teachers that you will look up to and you can go to and, and they will share what you need. Um, don't be afraid to ask for help. Excellent. So that's your advice to uh, first year teachers. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you the authority now to talk to <laughs> principals, not just in, in, in Milford, but I've been a principal for 11 years become, before coming to Milford and I'm learning so much. What would be something you'd want to tell building leaders that mm -hmm. we didn't know that could support the English language um, educators and students that could help create that culture not just in your classroom but, but in a school? Um, I would say first start in the classroom. I've seen so many administrators come in but just keep getting in there. Some teachers might not want you in there, but at least pop your head in and say, you know, I see you, I see what you're doing, keep up the great work. Um, and then, you know, keep going, keep doing that. So mm -hmm. hold, host more all school events or invite parents to more things, even if it's something as simple as, you know, a picnic or a lunch. Let's, let's bring the whole school together, the whole community together and, and extend that out. All right, excellent. So you are day 180-ish now. Yeah. And you have taken your you know, incoming class on day one, up through and getting them, them ready for wooden. What are some things that you're proud of that your students learned over this year? Um, they have really become just strong, independent individuals. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a few of them, most of them, who lacked confidence. And I'm excited to send them up um, as new people. I mean, they're just, they carry themselves differently. They advocate for themselves. They are responsible for their learning and I'm I'm really sure they're going to do great things once they get up to Woodland. So I'm going to go on the other side of that. There's some first graders that are just finishing up this year and they're going to be coming into your class next year. What would be a message to your first grade class coming into you to expect when they walk through that door to be part of Miss Cody's second grade class at Memorial School next year? They should be ready to do a lot of singing, <laughs> a lot of dancing, a lot of laughing at their teacher's expense. Uh, but also a lot of hard work and making mistakes and just trying to learn from each other. Oh, excellent. So as we start to wrap up, is there something that I haven't touched on that you would like to share that happens inside a, a classroom that you think that would benefit myself, our community that happens every day into your classroom, a lens into your classroom? What are some things we'd see? I think, and it may just be that it's second grade, but these students have the ability to look at a situation more empathetically than I think I've been able to, that other adults have, and I think that's something we lose as we go and we grow. Uh, I think sometimes we, we think, you know, what are we doing for myself? What are we doing for us? But we, we don't look at the big picture. Um, and these students coming from all over the world into my one room, has given me a global perspective um, and has definitely helped me become a more empathetic individual. Excellent. And one last thing, talk about districts. I know we are growing as a district and you must be able to collaborate with other teachers from, from other schools. Maybe talk a little bit to kind of wrap up how that works because it's not just your classroom at Memorial, uh, one room. How is the collaboration across the district look? I have been able to work um, through social media or through email or through even just meeting up after school for coffee. Um, I've been able to reach out and work with some amazing teachers. Uh, I was able to go into Miss Bemis' classroom over at second grade mm -hmm. in Brookside and get to meet her kids, which was awesome. I have been able to go over to Woodland and see some of my old students and see what great things they're doing. But I also get a chance to talk to those teachers who are teaching over there so I know if I'm on the right track and I'm on the right path. You know, we think about working, we want all of our students to be moving up together, uh, but we also have to think about what they need to know in the long term and am I, am I supplying them with the skills and the strategies that will make them successful down the road. Uh, but I also like, when you talk about collaboration, I was able to start um, Mystery Skypes this year as well. So oh, wow. my students have collaborated with students from all over the country, um, including Denver, West Virginia, Ohio, Florida. Uh, we found each other online, the other teachers, and my students play almost like a game, so they guess where we're from using yes okay. or no questions. But at the end of it, we talk about you know, what our classroom is like, how are our days the same, how are they different, 
and I think that collaboration for them at that age is huge too. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming in. Uh, it was great 20 minutes. I know I learned uh, I learned a lot. So I do want to thank uh, Miss Cody for coming in and taking the time. Um, I know I learned a lot. I hope that that you did as well. Uh, well, this time together in, in my time through the last two years, I have learned a lot about our ELs and our learning both con English concepts and through other social concepts simultaneously. And all educators need to view themselves as language teachers. Um, a few of the things that I took away from today and for, for the last two years is know your students. Increasing your understanding of who your students are and their backgrounds and educational experiences is gonna benefit you. And be aware of their social and emotional needs. Uh, Ms. Cody talked about that, about being on the playground and understanding more about students' families and their needs is key to building that collaboration and community in your classroom. Um, another thing that I hear every day in when I either collaborate with Ms. Norjanian or speaking with other teachers is that students need to speak, write, read, and listen every day in class. So using that authentic visuals and manipulatives will increase that. And I would encourage you to implement, use authentic resources, for examples, like menus or bus schedules or postcards, photographs, video clips we were talking about. This can enhance students' comprehension of other concepts as well when they're learning other languages. And, and finally, collaborate. We just heard about the collaborations. Collaborate, seek support from other teachers um, who may teach English language learners or other subjects or other educators, novice teachers, veteran teachers, they all have suggestions or even resource to support English language development and content concepts and working together. So we heard about that collaboration, we heard about um, increasing that speaking vocabulary, and I know I took a lot away from today. I'm thrilled in the last two years as well. And I wanna thank Ms. Cody and Ms. Norjani for all she does. Ms. Cody's knowledge today, I learned a great deal, and I hope you did as well, Milford community. Keep tuning in and keep learning all the great things we have going on here in Milford Public Schools. There's something in